Welcome to our worship service at Redeemer Church. I'm Bob, one of the pastors here at Redeemer. Uh, last week, we had our first successful reopening service so that you can either worship with us in person if you register on the website, but you're always also welcome to worship with us online. It's God who calls us to worship and he calls us by his word. In this season of social unrest and political turmoil, we often can wonder, where's, where's the peace? Where's the unity in our country? Well, our call to worship this morning comes from Ephesians chapter two. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made us both one and has broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility. Let's pray about that. Father, as we come to worship, we ask that as you meet us through our prayers and singing and the message, that you would show us how we have peace with you and can have peace with each other because of the work of Jesus on the cross on our behalf. Meet us now as we worship, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, Redeemer. My name is Alex. I'm the worship director here. Let's stand together in our homes around the country and around the world and worship the Lord together. Worthy is the king who conquered 
Welcome again to our worship service. If this is one of your first times worshiping with us, we'd like to encourage you to fill out one of our digital connect cards on our website. There's a number of opportunities to plug in men's, women's, kids, and also I'm the pastor of young adults and we have a very exciting upcoming online series that will start September 14th Monday evening from 7 to 8.30 that we would like to encourage you to sign up for. It's called The Gospel and Relationships. Friendships, romance, singleness, sexuality. How can you have lasting, satisfying relationships? That's a question for people of all ages, but especially in your 20s and 30s, when you're asking, where are my friends? What friendship might turn into somebody who maybe we'd get married someday? Those are the kinds of questions we're going to explore for the next four months. Hope you'll sign up for that. And now as we turn to our worship, one of the ways we worship is to give out of all that God has given to us. We want to encourage you to, to give online and have that be part of how you uh, just give all of who you are uh, in worship to God. Let me pray as we turn to God's word. Father, we ask now that you would speak to us, open our minds and hearts, uh, and strengthen our will to respond to what you teach us through the message this morning. All to the praise of Jesus, we ask it. Amen. Good morning, Redeemer. Today's text is from Psalm 133. Behold, how good and pleasant it is when brothers dwell in unity. It is like precious oil on the head, running down on the beard, on the beard of Aaron, running down on the collar of his robes. It is like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountain of Zion, for there the Lord has commanded the blessing, life forevermore. Hi everyone, I wanna welcome you again to our worship service here at Redeemer. My name is Paul, I'm one of the pastors here at this church. During the summer, we've been going through a series on the Psalm of Ascents. We were calling it Peaks and Valleys, that in this journey called life for followers of Jesus to be in a movement toward God, there are peaks and valleys, there's ups and downs, there's highs and lows. And we're nearing the end of our series, and today we're gonna to be looking at Psalm 133. It's a short Psalm, but oh my goodness, it is so significant. It is incredibly timely, and it's so important for us to hear. And it's about unity. Unity, not just in general, but unity in the covenant community. Unity among Christians. Unity in the church. And that's really important. Right now, there's a lot of division, a lot of just tense uh, uncertainty spoken and unspoken of, even in the church. There's tension over who to vote for in the election. There's tension in people wondering, how in the world can you vote for the other nominee? There's tension over how to respond to COVID, what measures to take and how far should it go. There's tension over the black community and the police community. And as Christians, just trying to navigate through that and trying to follow Jesus together, 
there's a lot of uncertainty and, and it's just really hard. In verse one, David uses this key phrase, good and pleasant. Unity that is good and pleasant. How can that be? It's so important. We wanna consider how unity can be good and pleasant. Now, there are things that can be good, but not necessarily pleasant. Several years ago, I got sick. I went to the doctor and I found out I had strep throat. And so the doctor prescribed to me antibiotics and for some reason prescribed to me liquid antibiotics. And let me tell you, it tasted really bad. <laughs> and so there's an example of taking medicine that's good and in, within a few days I, got, I felt much better. It was good, but it wasn't pleasant. On the other hand, something can be pleasant, but necessarily it might not be good for you. I've shared this before, I love In-N-Out. I love In-N-Out. I can eat a double-double French fries shake every day for the rest of my life and it would be so pleasant to me. And while it is pleasant to eat it every day, it's not necessarily gonna be good for me. It won't be good for my health, it won't be good for my waistline, my blood pressure. But David here talks about unity in the church family that is good and pleasant. And so for a few minutes, I'd like us to consider how that can be. And in this Psalm, he gives two examples, two perspectives and a reminder for us how unity can be good and pleasant. So let's look at the two perspectives. And he tells us it's oil and dew. Those are the two perspectives, the two examples that he gives. The first one is oil. And so David's here says in verse two, this unity that's good and pleasant, it is like the precious oil on the head running down on the beard, on the beard of Aaron running down on the collar of his robes. And what he's referring to here is when Aaron the high priest was anointed, set apart to be the high priest, Aaron and all his sons uh, being priests. And this is referenced back in Exodus chapter 29 and Exodus chapter 30. And when you read that, you see that there's holy oil that they're to be consecrated to win, and it's only to be used for the anointing of the priests, nothing else. And David here likens this unity that's good and pleasant to this. And he goes on to describe it like this precious oil that's going down on the head to the beard and just goes into the collar. It's just all, all encompassing. So what does that mean for us? Peter, in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, when he's writing to the church, he says, but you, in Christ Jesus, you are a royal priesthood. And so what this means in terms of unity, understanding it is this, that unity that is good and pleasant comes when we realize that we are each priests to one another. When we are priests to one another, what does that mean? The priests are set apart. They're set apart to serve others, to intercede for others, to assist and come alongside, to help others draw closer and nearer to God. So with Christianity, the way we view every single human being, every single human being, young, old, male, female, whatever it is, the Bible talks about the importance of the Imago Dei. Every human being is made in the image of God. But this also tells us within the church community, not only is everyone we see made in the image of God, but among Christians, Christians are priests to one another. So in terms of application, let me say it this way. For those of you who are listening to this message, followers of Jesus, it means that unity, how this can come about that's good and pleasant, do you see yourself as a priest? Do you see yourself as one who's coming along, assisting and helping others draw near to God? Are you helping and serving others or are you pointing fingers at other people? Priests to come alongside. But not only that, as you look at other brothers and sisters in the church community, do you see that in Jesus, they are priests? It's easy to look down on people who differ on you. There's, it's easy to kind of dismiss or roll your eyes on uh, with, with people who may have a different take on certain things. But to everyone there in Jesus Christ, the covenant community, friends, they are anointed. They are set apart. They are priests 
We are all priests to one another. And that should change the way we engage and view other people. In the way that we listen, the way that we honor people, the way that we humbly just ask for forgiveness, seek to learn, to speak the truth in love. And ultimately, we're, we're reminded as we look at this passage that Jesus Christ, he is the greater Aaron, that Jesus is the high priest. And this high priest, Jesus, he is the one who intercedes for us. He's the one who died to bring about this unity for the church family. And as such, in Jesus, we are to maintain the unity of the spirit. So let me do a thought experiment here with you. Who comes to mind as you think about just tension or uncertainty, a little bit of standoffishness in the church community family? Whoever that person or those people might be, can I ask you to look through this lens to consider this good and pleasant unity that comes from one, are you a priest, are you a, a priest to them, shepherding and coming alongside? And you see them as set apart as priests as well, too. Let's pursue that together. So that's the first picture, imagery, perspective that David gives. And it's a significant one. The second one that he gives is that of dew. It's water. And so David says this in verse three, after talking about how beautiful it is, this good and pleasant union when brothers dwell together, he says in verse three, it is like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountain of Zion. Now, Mount Hermon is located on the border of Syria and Lebanon. It's a significant mountain over 9,200 square, uh, 9,200 feet high. And talks about how there's dew there and it comes down to, in this imagery, to Zion. And Zion was also mounted around 2,400 feet high. But the point here is, in Mount Hermon, there's dew. And the dew in the morning time signifies being refreshed. So this morning, I went outside my house and it, was, it wasn't that hot yet. And so it was pretty cool. And the early, we had the sprinkler system on. And so there was a sense when I breathed in the air, I could smell just the freshness of the morning. And what David's getting at here and how unity comes about, it's to see people in the church family and realize that God is the one who is faithfully at work in each and every one of our lives to bring renewal and transformation and hope in each and every one of his family members. Friends, that's something we need to take heart of. That's something that we need to be reminded of, that there's times of refreshing that God is committed to. So what does that mean for us? That means first for you as you're listening to this, Is your soul tired? Is it parched? Are you exhausted? May it be that the Spirit of God would be like dew and bring times of refreshing to your soul. But not only that, as you look at others, that unity that's good and pleasant would also come about from seeing that such people, church family members, you don't write them off. You don't dismiss them and say, oh, they'll never change and that's just the way it's gonna be. But to entrust in the Lord who is faithful, to entrust that it is the Lord who brings dew and refreshment and renewal in his timing, in his sovereign ways, in the lives of his people because he loves his church and is building up the body of Christ. And lastly, this perspective, it's to remember that Jesus Christ who died and rose again and he ascended into heaven. One day he's gonna return. And when he returns, it's gonna be the ultimate times of refreshing. Do, renewal, freshness. And as followers of Jesus, we live in that hope. We live in that hope even when things are really hard, even when things are very stressful. 
So those are the two examples that David gives here. He says how good and pleasant it is when the family of God dwells in unity. Those two pictures, oil and dew, oil and water. That's how it comes about. But thirdly, a reminder that he gives. And so the reminder that he gives is this, that this unity that is beautiful, that's pleasant and that's good, it comes from God. It comes from the Lord. So at the end of verse three, let me just read from verse three. He says, it is like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion. And then he says, but there, referring to Zion, but there the Lord has commanded the blessing, life forevermore. Now in David's day, Zion, Jerusalem, the city of God. Obviously, David did not build the temple. His son Solomon did. But it was there that God was dwelling in the midst of his people. Centuries later, Jesus comes. And when he overturns the tables in, in, in the temple, he says, do you remember what he says? He says, destroy this temple in three days. It'll be raised up. He's referring to himself. And as Jesus died and he rose again and he ascended to heaven, he sends the Holy Spirit. And the apostle Paul talks about this in Ephesians chapter four. And in chapter two, he talks about now the followers of Jesus. We are living stones and the spirit of God now dwells in us. But the point I want us to see is that this unity, this unity comes from the Lord. It's not something that we fabricate or work after hard, but it's what the Lord gives and brings about to us. And that's so important to know. One of the other things to just take note of in this psalm is that there's this element of the language of going down, falling downward. So in the example, it says here, when he talks about the precious oil on the head running down on the beard, on the beard of Aaron, then running down on the collar of his robes. And then it talks about the dew of Hermon, which falls downward on the mountains of Zion. So you see this unity that comes, that there's this movement, this, this language of going down, down, down. And here's the unique thing. This is the Psalm of Ascents, and we're nearing the end. Psalm of Ascents meaning in our journey of ascending, ascending on our way to the city of God, there is a movement downward from God. That means the more and more you make progress and mature in the Christian life, the more and more you realize life is by grace. It's God who comes down. It's the Lord who brings about unity. It's Jesus who's done that for us. And that is humbling, but that's what gives us hope. And because this unity comes from the Lord, the very first word is behold. Behold. When does someone say behold? It's, it's when it's saying, whoa, take a look at this. Wow, you have to look at this. Indeed. May the Lord bring about unity that is good and pleasant so that people will behold and say, this is unique. So I'm bringing this to a close. These are hard times. And I think it's gonna get more stressful and more angst-ridden in the future, days to come. And the enemy wants nothing more than to just divide. But would you pray with me that the reality of this psalm would be manifest among God's people here at Redeemer to you and to me, that we would see one another as priests to one another, that the dew, the times of refreshing, we would trust in the Lord who is at work in us and through us. We would find hope knowing that it's the Lord who brings us unity and it's his spirit that engages us to maintain this unity in the bond of peace. Amen. Before I pray, close us in prayer. Can I just ask you, I'd like to just have a moment of silent prayer. Can I ask you to pray for unity this, that's good and pleasant for our church in your heart, for me, 
for what's going on? Can I ask you to pray that this psalm would become a reality in our lives? So would you do that in silent prayer? And then I'll close. Father in heaven, we come before you today as we've just been briefly reflecting on Psalm 133 on unity. These are trying times. There's a lot of division, discord, a lot of uncertainty. How good and pleasant it is when the family of God dwells in unity. We need you to bring that about. Lord, we repent of the ways in which we have not promoted unity instead of serving others, pointing fingers at others. We repent of those things and we ask that you would give us a perspective that comes from your word to help us to see that we are priests to one another, that we would engage in love, that we would intercede, we would serve, we would seek to help draw other people closer to you, that there would be a teachability in our hearts, in my heart, to know that since there's blind spots, that other priests in the family of God are also helping me draw closer to you. Thank you that we can pray with hope because you promised to bring times of refreshing into the lives of your people. Thank you that your spirit indeed dwells in the midst of your people. So fill us with hope as we look to you in the days to come. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, Pastor Paul, for that message. Why don't we stand again and sing this hymn about the unity of us as believers. of his
Thank you so much for joining us here in our worship service. We're going to close with a benediction. As the Lord sends us out, may he bring about this beautiful unity among the followers of Jesus, among our church family. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Thank you for joining us here today. God bless you.